Mr. President, I come to the floor today to talk about what I believe may be one of the most critical pieces of legislation to address human trafficking in the United States. Senator, and that piece of legislation is Senator Leahy's Runaway and Homeless Youth and Trafficking Prevention Act. I am proud to be a co-sponsor of this legislation and to add my name to Senator Leahy's amendment that he introduced yesterday that adds this important piece of legislation to this current debate. Senator Leahy, as we all know, has been a tireless advocate for homeless and runaway youth and for the LGTB individuals and for victims of human trafficking. And his bill would provide the necessary services and additional protections for all of these young children. So thank you again, Senator Leahy, for your continued work on behalf of some of our most vulnerable, our runaway and homeless youth. Uh, as a former Attorney General, I certainly believe that additional uh, uh, tools be made available to prosecutors um, so that they can prosecute traffickers and johns, and that we need to intervene and provide recovery services for victims. Um, I think that that needs never been greater. But why I am speaking today on this legislation is because it goes to that critical uh, element, which is prevention. It supports those who are most susceptible for um, human trafficking, and that is our runaway and homeless youth. Um, preventing one of the most vulnerable segments of our population from falling prey to this modern-day slavery should be one of the top priorities of this nation. Where we talk about trafficking, frequently people think these are young, uh, young girls who may be coming into our country in containers or, or trafficked, but we know that over 80 percent of the people trafficked especially in the sex trade in this country, are trafficked, are, are citizens of our country. They are our children. They are American children. And so we cannot simply put a face on this that, uh, that uh, doesn't recognize that American children are being trafficked. And who among them is most vulnerable? I will tell you it is runaway and homeless youth. And so it is our responsibility to do everything we can to prevent those children from uh, uh, being in a place where they are extraordinarily vulnerable. Now, uh, we've heard some people say that they don't believe that homeless and runaway youth are more susceptible to being trafficked and that we shouldn't single out special services for LGTB youth. Um, you know, I can tell you that I don't believe that. And I know better because I've been to facilities that provide services for runaway and homeless youth. And I don't believe people who say this have ever spoken to the social workers and the professionals who deal with these children every day. I don't believe people who say that understand that runaway and homeless youth, unfortunately, have been more than likely already sexually and physically abused or told every day that they're worthless, or told that because of who they are, they are no longer welcome in their home. And let me tell you, when you diminish the spirit of a child, you then create a vulnerability in that child to being a target for traffickers. You know, a lot of people also think this is just a big city problem. Well, let me tell you some of the stories of North Dakota. Uh, just last June, a 13-year-old runaway from Minneapolis was rescued, and her traffickers were arrested in Fargo-Moorhead. Police believe that the traffickers were more than likely on their way out to our oil patch with the victim, and they stopped over in Fargo-Moorhead to make uh, a little cash by selling these children in the Fargo-Moorhead area. This is a story we hear over and over again, the vulnerability of children, the trafficking of children, into the oil patch in western North Dakota. In fact, talking to the experts who track advertising on, on, uh, of young children, in whether it is in the deep or, or dark net or whether it is in things like uh, back pages, what they will tell you is the spike up in trafficking and ads in western North Dakota alarms them and should alarm us. 
And so this is not a big city problem. We know that this is a problem that affects North Dakota. And if traffickers are willing to snatch up a runaway in the Twin Cities and bring them out to North Dakota, you can sure know that they are trying to prey on this vulnerable population in North Dakota as well. And you know, this is personal for me. I know a lot about this topic because my sister works in this area and I've spent a lot of time with her staff and they serve, um, they're the largest agency in North Dakota serving runaway and homeless youth populations in Fargo-Moorhead. I've heard stories of how vulnerable these children are. I've heard stories about how the trafficking victim who they have already worked with, I've heard them tell stories of how they recruit these kids. And sometimes they're bold enough to just try and cycle through waiting rooms, waiting for these kids. I've heard the stories of guys uh, waiting just down the block or in parking lots of shelters to snatch up these kids. And also, I've heard stories of how once a young child is in this, how they then become recruiters of other young runaway children. These stories are why it is so imperative to take action. And we can take action here in the United States Senate. We can take action by taking up the Runaway and Homeless Youth Trafficking Prevention Act. This bill reauthorizes vital programs that provide short-term shelter for youth who do not have a place to sleep. Imagine that. Youth, our children, do not have a place to sleep. Crisis interventions and referrals to youth on the street and at drop-in centers. A hand oh, up, a hand up. We'll take you, we'll help you, we'll help you recover from whatever has happened in your life. A long-term residential services, training and education and employment support to help get these kids off the street and per permanently provide a safe and secure path forward. And importantly, this bill makes sure that LGTB runaway and homeless youth are not discriminated against when it comes to providing resources and services. You know, you can have an opinion about this, but we all know that no human should be subjected to those kinds of conditions, and we must do everything that we can to help them uh, uh, seek, the same, seek and receive the same services as any other child. By ensuring that runaway and homeless youth have a safe place to stay, and the resources they need, we can stem the tide of human trafficking in our country. By identifying vulnerable youth early and as effectively as possible, we can reduce the number of child sex trafficking victims by preventing them from becoming victims in the first place. We can and we must do everything in our power to not only prosecute, to identify, prosecute, and help victims recover, we must do everything we can to prevent human trafficking. And we can take a huge step forward on that by focusing attention and resources on our runaway and homeless youth population.